All right, we're gonna try something a little new, a little different. I'm gonna do a voiceover while I'm rolling through with the old skitter here. There I am getting ready. Got my Protos helmet on, made by Fanner. I know it looks a little goofy, but it's a good helmet. Nice and comfy. And it's actually a lot quieter than the other ones. I always put my face shield down because I always get whacked on my face by the branches. You can see a lot of them will be swinging by. I'm just starting in that trail that I walked a little bit earlier. And uh, I just tidied it up a little bit to take out some of those spears that are sitting on there. Now I'm into this heavier stuff, working my way up the hill. It usually works a little bit better when you're coming down the hill to scrape all that stuff off, but meh. I was making my way up, might as well do a little bit of work, right? We sort of get beat around a lot in this machine. I just put a new seat in it, it's pretty comfy. Um, but it's not a not a machine of comfort by any means. Now this is right where I was pointing to earlier on in the video where I said there's a little bit of a hill here. Might be hard to come up. It'll slow the load down more or less. That's the one I'm, I'm just working down right now. You can, you know, it's hard to tell, but I'm sort of poking my way down it. Every time I stop, it's because the blade sort of gets caught on a rock. Um, a lot of the property has uh, gravel on it, but this higher area right here has got a lot of bigger rocks in it so whenever I try to drop the blade to scrape I end up getting caught up so that's the machine grabbing on every few almost every few seconds sort of get into the flat kind of plateaued area and it's just believe it or not there is a trail there you can see I can see it when I'm driving anyway there's an old skitter trail and those little trees growing up there they're all maple little sugar maples and unfortunately in our area sugar maple it's not worth a whole lot of money now I'm just breaking out to that plateau that sort of overlooks that beaver swale and uh, in the other video I had to split these videos up uh, the one where I was using a handheld camera in the other video I sort of looked down over top of that little pond this area in here it's looks nice and flat but it's still rocky and you can see I just picked up on that right front tire I got one of those little beaver spears where they gnawed off a stupid tree and it's stuck in my chain right there I kept on whacking my chainsaw the bar stuck out of the side of the skitter about two inches and it kept on hitting it and it would knock it up into my feet you guys see my drinks right on the side I made these little I put these little cup holders in there so I can easily carry my drinks pretty cool right I'm just beating my way through this nonsense and I'm just into a top of a hill here and I'm getting out to sort of see what's where I got to go more or less. It's a little tricky down in there and uh, I can't really see where the trail was. Rehydrating, of course, but now I know where I'm going so I can get in there and have some fun. Check my emails. Let's see what you guys are writing about me. Starting up the monster, getting her ready for action again. So I figure I kind of know where I'm going now. I'm going to beat my way, way down through this hill. I did take my chainsaw and I cleared up some some trees that were going to get in the way. Um, I don't push them all over. Sometimes root balls are a little too big, leaves a big hole in the ground. So I just sort of walked through and checked out the area where I wanted to go and that's it. It's hard to tell you know how steep these banks are that I'm going up and down um, some of them are about 25 30 35 degrees later on I get in about a 40 45 degree uh, hill there and I just I don't have brakes so I use the blade and the load on the back to slow me down more or less you can see just up here just in the corner of that screen where I knocked a little maple where it looks like an oak down Try to push them out of the way. And there's another oak down in front. But this baby gets hung up in that tree right there like 
things never really go the way you want them to, right? I was hoping they'd just sort of drop out of the tree that it was hung up in. And if I try to push that, it's going to snap and there's a lot of force and pressure in there. Something's going to give and take up my head or something nasty. Worse than my head, not sure. So I just drop the blade over the back of it and I just pull it down and that sort of dislodges it and it falls down. It's a bit of a learning experience smashing through all this stuff. Yeah, learning the techniques. You know, these old time guys who get in these machines, they can do the work pretty quickly, but not me. It's just taking a little bit of a little bit of time. The dozer helped playing around with that. Definitely I got things figured out. These trees that I'm smoking here, they're um, actually uh, uh, ironwood. They're good for firewood. I'll use those at the camp, but they don't grow into anything of any kind of real size. And they're real dirty wood to cut. They're not, uh, they're not clean at all, and it's really hard, hence the name Ironwood. You can see I knocked that stump down. I just pushed those out of the way. Once they're knocked over like that, they just sort of squeege off into the bush. And You know, after about, well, by next spring, you won't really even notice those things. They sort of just rot and fall into the ground. Anything that's sort of hung up in the air doesn't rot very fast. That's why it's important to either run over them or cut them up with a chainsaw and let them fall on the ground. This girl here was a dead one, partially dead. You can see how easy that falls down. That's about a 14 inch oak tree. You, know, you usually can't push them over, but that whole root ball there, that stump or stump ball, they're all rotten. If you look right up by that air filter, you can see where I'm gonna be walking out to trim those. All, uh, what, four or five of them that are there. Uh, and pull them out because they're right in the middle of my trail and that whole thing is rotten and I'm trying to take out the stuff that's dangerous that can actually fall a um, lot of widow makers in that in that bush right there predominantly oak and some nasty stuff you'll see me looking the whole time checking things out to make sure it's safe this first one I'm lopping into um, is actually quite hollow in the inside and these are all leaners you know they're leaning pretty good uh, a lot of weight up top and every one of them has some branches you're gonna see me hauling butt here to get out of the way because stuff's flying everywhere um, Chico's I think they call them some guys call them Chico's Chicho's Widowmakers whatever you want the result is the same in the end smash skull paralyzed talking funny not waking up ever or you know taking the dirt nap it's not cool uh, I uh, notched it did a plunge cut and just cut the strap off the back you can see stuff is still whacking down there I gotta keep my mouth closed more often I guess when I'm working in the bush I'm a mouth breather it's not cool there goes another one top fell off of that guy and slams back down dangerous stuff man a lot of these are kinda rotten up on this high ridge here with all the rock, these old oak, um, they have a tendency to dry out in a dry season and if it's a little too dry then basically it's a drought and they sort of start to die. That's what happened to a few of these and then of course the beaver kill, got to get rid of those. Just bucking that guy off the stump. Two hundred yards short of my destination, but this big bad boy here was in the way, and as you can see, oh, I do like the smell of oak when you cut it. These guys were all rotten, and this is where my trail needs to go. So that's this one here is ready to just snap off as soon as I put the winch to these. I don't know how much that thing can pull, but let's find out. I'm gonna. Maybe hook four of them up, see if it'll pull them. I'm gonna leave them full length. I'm gonna leave everything attached <laughs> and drag that road out and then I'll snip them up on the way out in a little spot and then I'll drive over top of the tops of these trees. I wanna clear the path, so that's why I'm doing that. And let's see what this machine can do. All right, now I've got my load. I've pulled a couple loads with it, but this is a big one. I've left those all those trees full length. I want to basically use them to scar out that trail pretty good. Um, rip up the, all the little beaver spikes and 
widen it out, level it out, move the rocks. Those big trees, when they're hanging off the back like that, all the branches that sort of push all that, uh, all those loose rocks off to the side, which is kind of nice. Um, turned out it was raining all day, of course, so things get a little muddy and the wood gets dirty and nobody likes to cut firewood with mud all over it, but yeah, well, whatever. It is what it is. I only get so many days a month to do this kind of stuff, so I am making my roads. Now when I get onto this hill here, um, those trees are probably about 70 feet long or more and they're getting hung up in the back and I'm finding out the limitations of the machine. I only have chains on the front, but it's sort of running out of power, uh, running out of steam. You know, they get hung up on trees coming through and basically what I'd end up doing is I drop the load. As you can see, I reached back there. I'm looking back and that tree just off to the right, I just passed it. I bumped the uh, back of the skidding arch kind of thing, the uh, protectors, the wheel protectors up against it. And then I use that to anchor myself and then I just pull the hitch up or the, the load up this hill. Now in the video just before this one, I was uh, you know walking through the bush, showing people where I was going and I said that's where I want to go, I want to go over that hill. Um, it's a quick way down to the landing and basically this is it. This is the quick way. So. No brakes, I got a blade, and I got about, uh, I don't know, a bunch of tonnage of, of uh, wood behind me. You're going to be able to slow me down. So I'm sort of poking my way through here, finding out which way to go. There are a couple of ledges and cliffs, and when you start knocking down those trees like that, you can't really see what you're getting involved in ahead of you. So you got to sort of really take your time and just look and see what it is you're doing. And um, with the hitch on the back, if you are heading downhill and you get sort of locked up, you can't back up. So you're going to be in a bit of a in a in a bit of a bind, literally. So here I am smoking over top of this ridge. This is probably about a 40, I don't know, I'm going to say a 40 degree uh, decline or incline if you're going up it. But uh, I'm pretty sure this machine's not going to make it up it. I'm just looking over the front and I'm just edging and inching my way through this I I'm staying between the trees that's the nice thing about the skitter is it's nice and uh, narrow so it goes through these uh, tight spots really well I'm digging that and I'm just you can see the blade just dig in right there and it sort of gets hung up on the blade there's a whole bunch of tonnage pushing that blade in the ground and the hydraulics won't lift it up so I got to sort of Mickey Mouse around with the power and move the back wheels uh, side to side kind of stuff and free it up and then she'll start to come loose but there's a lot of weight on that beast and right now basically gravity is my friend it's helped me pull those logs which I have laying on the ground as an anchor um, and I think my, something fell out of there a wedge fell down by my foot got my wedges in there and I gotta nail this tree here. There we go. Doesn't look steep, boys, but uh, it's only about a pucker factor of about four the first time you're doing it. Now all this stuff in here, I did walk in through here, so I sort of knew where I was going, but there's a whole bunch of dead old poplar um, that I'm just gonna basically run right over. It's just an animal. Bang! Get out of my face. Get out of my face, tree. You need to come down. You too. You're out of there. There you go. Then I gotta hang a sharp right here onto my onto my old logging road. There it is. Oh here. It felt good getting down to that road. I'll be honest with you. So that whole you know that whole shortcut down that hill probably knocked five or seven minutes off my drive and uh, you know even less running through the mud and the dirt on the track right uh, here we are just blasting out to the landing gonna drop my load and then head back in for some more trail clearing grab another uh, hitch and then come back out and do it all over again I gotta tidy up this area out here I don't even really have it ready for setting up logs but that nah. is what it is got some time so I went and smoked down some some baddies so I could make myself a nice trail. Uh, here's another camera angle up on the uh, ROPS or the rollover protection structure there. You can see some rocks rolling down the hill. 
Uh, just gives you a bit of a different kind of view, a bit of an angle. Uh, just to sort of then bang, there goes the blade right in the ground. That was just the second time coming down. And here's the same one, but you guys can listen to it for real. You can hear the hydraulics rolling. And that's it boys thanks for watching as usual keep on coming back more vids coming on this trail